Okay, fa <laughs> I can't even speak right now. I'm having really bad sinus problems. If you can see my eyes, how puffy you they mean are. Your allergies? Yes, they're terrible. But today we are going to be reviewing 1998, directed by Martin Brest. Meet Joe Black, starring Martin, what? Martin Brest. B R E S T. There's no A in there, so it's not weird. You're making it weird. <laughs> I just wasn't sure if I we heard got that right. Brad Pitt, <laughs> who you kept referring to as a pretty boy. And then he you is, have Anthony Hopkins, Academy Award winning actor. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we have the female lead, Claire Forlani. Hmm. I don't know. Jeffrey Tambor's in it. All right. This movie is very polarizing. So this is a remake mm -hmm. of a 1934 film that was called. Death Takes a Holiday, starring Frederick March. The tagline oh, wow. for the 1934 film, No one can die while he makes love. Wow. Did this have a tagline? Actually, you can. It can cause <laughs> heart attacks in older men, I've heard, because it's too much excitement. <laughs> Probably. Which, <laughs> tying it all back... This movie is about Anthony Hopkins. It starts off with him looking like he's having a heart attack while he's in bed. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, he but he's hearing like Field of Dreams type of whispers. If you build it, he will come. Except for they're not saying that. It's more like... It's just one word. Yes. Yeah. And it's his voice. And then there's a lot of inconsistencies in this movie, okay? Yeah. And to me, that is tied into a lot of the reviews of it. This movie is also extremely long. I have passed it up many times on video cassette as a two-part VHS. Three mm -hmm. hours. Interestingly enough, the TV version of this film was edited down to two hours. And oh. also for in-flight movies, that version was cut down to two hours. They removed any tie-ins of the business practice of the William Parrish character. And the mm -hmm. director was furious and asked that his name not be on any of the TV releases or the in-flight movies. Because if oh, you didn't wow. like that, his three-hour vision had been altered. So this movie is considered a commercial failure. It made $44 million in the U.S. It was much more successful overseas. So it cost $90 million to make, and it would gross $142 million, but it was considered in the U.S. a complete commercial failure. This movie was the first feature film in theaters to feature a preview for the Star Wars Phantom Menace. And according to what I read online, people bought tickets to see this movie just to see the Star Wars preview and then would <laughs> leave right after the Star Wars preview because the Star Wars mania was in full swing in Oh my goodness. This movie was filmed over 1997. It came out in 98. The year after, we had recently reviewed a movie starring Anthony Hopkins called The Edge, which was a great movie. Well, yeah, it should have been called Fighting the Bear. <laughs> it should have been called Fighting the Bear. <laughs> this is Let's just get this clear. Have I said it already? This is a very polarizing movie, and I want mm -hmm. you to kind of give... If you guys don't know about this movie, I'll let you give the backstory on it. Okay, so basically the... Um, what's his name again? The Brad... The Brad... The Brad Pitt character um, comes onto the scene after the Anthony Hopkins guy, like Corey said, he was in bed, like hearing these voices saying like, yes, yes, and stuff. And he's like, what? But he was kind of hearing his own voice. It was weird yeah. that it wasn't him. So then, um, so then this He's character... like a rich multimillionaire of yeah. a media empire. Oh, was it media? Okay. Yeah. So then this character comes on the scene and he's like, I'm here to answer your question that you've been asking. And Anthony Hopkins is like, what question? I haven't asked anything. And he said, you were asking if you were going to die and I'm death and I'm here to take you, but I'll let you have more time. If you just give if me a tour of the world. you'll show me around and give me a holiday and let me experience basically what Which, it's like to be a human. It's tying it back to Death Takes a Holiday, the 1934 movie. Right. That's basically what that movie was. And then the Anthony Hopkins character has two daughters. He has an older daughter who's planning like this elaborate birthday, birthday party, party for him. It's like bigger than a normal wedding basically. when you're mega Very rich extravagant. it's probably not that extravagant that's probably like run of the mill for rich people but for us but when you see folk, it at the end it is it's massive and there's even a comment someone says maybe the president will show up at his birthday which i don't know now if that was a joke but he was very wealthy they're emphasizing so that he was a very important person 
Right. So that's his older daughter. She's planning this elaborate birthday. He kind of doesn't really care that much about mm -mm, totally the planning, disinterested. but she keeps asking him questions. And then the Trying younger daughter... Trying to win his approval by doing all these right. things. Because at some point in the movie, it's stated that the younger daughter was right here favorite. was the more like beloved of the two daughters for whatever reason. And she was a resident uh, internal medicine doctor in training. Right. But and somehow she has a bunch of time to cow run dance, around cow with this guy and, with and get guy. to know yeah, which to him me, as a person. I, there's a, there's plot hole number one. Let's right. talk about the massive mansion uh -oh. is filmed in Rhode Island at a place called the Aldrich Estate, which huh. is a massive compound built in the late teen, 1800s that was the um, estate of former U.S. Senator Nelson Aldrich after he died. His family would sell the property to the uh, Catholic diocese and they turned it into a seminary and it's been owned by the Catholic Church since 1939. Okay, so what I wanted to say about this guy has a right-hand man who his younger daughter is dating. What was he, his name? That character? Alex or something? Was it Alex? I no, can't remember. I don't remember. Anyways, I can't remember First, for sure his you name. you don't see him as a bad guy. Yeah. But then his time marches on. Spoilers? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. So basically, but the Hopkins character gives her this advice. He's like, you don't really seem like, you know, your heart's in this relationship all the way. And basically he says, um, Anthony Hopkins. Oh, you said Hopkins. Oh, Hopkins. The whatever. Bill, the Bill, Bill, his name is Bill, Bill. Parrish. Okay. Is Bill Parrish. Yeah. Movie. So he's giving his daughter this advice about love and he says all these eloquent lines about how oh, it was a great you, know, you need to be swept off your feet and but also you creating... need to dance, want to dance a dervish and all Wouldn't you stuff. say that he was creating very unrealistic standards for feelings of love towards someone? Um, I don't know. It was a great monologue. I'll give it that. It was. So then when the Joe Black character... <laughs> comes on the but, scene but, he's like i heard everything you said about love and being swept off your feet and how you want to have this feeling at least once in your life and he's like and i i liked your speech and i want to experience that too so but but back up back up okay what the inconsistency yes, started this though movie, first it was starting yeah. off like i liked it but then there's yeah. all these inconsistencies that start to kind of bring what? down my okay score. it's okay this is going to be hard to explain but and spoilers but so the character of this guy we don't the really Joe learn Black his character. name yeah At he's first, unknown we don't ever know up, his name well yeah he the original guy shows up in the coffee in the coffee shop with her and he's like hitting on her and stuff and telling her how much he likes her and then, but they don't exchange names or phone numbers. But or before they part, he says a line that the dad told her. And then she's like, ooh, maybe this is the guy for me. Oh, yeah. Something about when lightning, lightning strikes yeah. or something. Because that was part of his that love was part monologue. Of his love monologue. Yeah. So then, so then they part ways. And then he stupidly <laughs> lets looks himself back. get hit he by a bus. He looks back to see or, if she's looking back. Not and a he bus. crosses against the red hand. And he gets hit by two cars and dies. Yeah, not one, but two cars. So then the death. Character. So then the death character says he needed a body, so he takes over the body of this guy. And that's unbeknownst to her. She thinks it's still the guy that she met in the coffee shop. Now, right. if recently we watched the Twin Peaks revival, which I don't remember, the, the return, Twin Peaks the return, mm. and the Dale Cooper character in that movie kind of gets mixed up in this in-between, and he's partially this other character dougie jones who like <laughs> is an idiot and doesn't know how to do anything and like people have to like help him even like open a door and the joe black character on the at first when he's death coming as a person to experience human life because all he's been is death in this afterlife realm he right. acts like the Dougie Jones character from Twin Peaks where he didn't mm -hmm. even know what peanut butter was and he didn't even know to give a scoop on a spoon and put it in his mouth and he acts like an idiot and they bring right. him to a dinner party and he just has like no common sense at all. Everyone's and eating like steak and he's like, can I just have plain peanut butter? He just acts spoon? like adult. <laughs> like he has, even though he's been living for millennia, observing a human life. He acts stupid in a lot of oh, regards. Oh, he acts like adult, not a, no, adult. A, a D D U L T, D O L T. D O L T. Yeah. So anyway, he acts like a child. There's a lot of inconsistencies like with his kid. character because sometimes he acts like an incompetent moron, like he doesn't know anything about reality, and then other times he's like too well versed, too in the know, mm -hmm. and 
the ending was just a disaster, which to me, I couldn't stand it. I just, In the end, he knows all this sophisticated lingo, and it's like, wait, beforehand you were getting excited about peanut butter, didn't know how to kiss a woman, yeah. and didn't know what making love was, really. Yeah. <laughs> So this is when the movie starts to go off the rails, which Awkward. to me, this is reflective in the polarization of the reviews. So Rotten Tomatoes critics average is 45%. However, over 100,000 audience members submitted their review to Rotten Tomatoes on the movie and they have an average of 81%. Now the mm -hmm. same thing with Google. 1,200 plus people have submitted their reviews to Google, and they are 4.6 out of 5. So even though this movie was a commercial failure, we're talking almost 30 years later. We're talking 25 years after the fact. Hard to believe 1998 was 24 years ago. This movie is resonating with people, and it's considered a romance fantasy. Hmm. That being said, I just could not look past the inconsistencies and I think that I am, like, going to align with what... I liked... I did enjoy the movie. Oh, my God. It was so long, though. It was too Three long. Three hours was just... It was long. Yeah. And that's part of the... Uh, I'm on the fence about it. Yeah. And the other part is just the ending and then, like, the inconsistencies of his character being super intelligent and in the know. And then other times he's, like, the Dougie Jones character on Twin Peaks and he's just not very bright. Yeah. Three Which is half. kind of a real turn off because she's, like... Do you mind if I kiss you? Because he acts like a little kid, like he doesn't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to go three and so a half. So she has to initiate everything. But then at the end, he's like spouting off all this lingo and he's super eloquent and knows all this business talk. And you're like, wait, what? Are yeah, where, where did all this come from all And of then sudden? he's supposed to be deaf. He talks about how he's been around for forever, basically. But he hasn't figured out from observing humans and making people die this whole time, like, what love is all about. I don't know. It's, just, it's weird. But um, you can't overanalyze it too much. And then the ending. The ending was really awkward. So let's, I don't know. Let's do I don't a spoiler know. alert. This movie's 24 okay. years old. Okay. So... Spoilers. They're having his huge 65th birthday, and he, the Brad Pitt character, is going to take her off into the great beyond and leave the Anthony Hopkins character, and then he gets all mad, and he's like, no, my daughter's got her whole life ahead of him. She's young, and then, don't like, let her die yet, and stuff. I think he comes to terms, and he doesn't even have to say, say who he is. He gives her a knowing look, and I think she realizes that he's not this human that she met in the coffee shop. He's somebody else. So then all of a sudden you see the daughter across the party. You see the dad and the Joe Black character walking up and over a footbridge. And then all of a sudden the Joe Black character comes back by himself. And right. the daughter runs to meet him. And all of a sudden the former dead coffee shop boy toy has now <laughs> been reanimated and the Joe Black character has left. And she doesn't even go look for the dead body of her dad that probably is just dead on the other side of the bridge. And it's like, yeah. wait a minute. Two people came over the bridge and one person came back. Aren't you like, where's my dad? No mention of it. All of a sudden, she's just well, gonna... Well, she seemed to know that he was gonna die, but you would think he was Oh, yeah, because she mentions it, too, because she mentions it to him. Like, I wish you could have met my dad. It's like, it was just, I did not, it was very yeah. sloppy... There was no build up to like him actually dying. It just kind of left it in well, this mystique. When they and he popped, kind of said his goodbyes. She did say this sounds like you're saying goodbye or something. So she kind of she kind of knew, I guess, but it was just weird that you wouldn't be concerned as a daughter to like go see where's my dad or is he I got to see that corpse. Whatever. Basically is what I'm saying. And everybody else including her older sister at the party thought the dad was still alive, so yeah, what even my even my even my um seven, seven year old, old Samuel yeah. was like he's like, Wait, doesn't everybody at the party <laughs> think he's still alive? And there wasn't like, enough closure yes, for me. Yes, they do, son. So we're running really <laughs> he, long. He walked into the movie at that at that point. But I will say that I thought this movie was gonna be really like creepy or scary because he's deaf. But I it actually told you it wasn't was a romance at all. <laughs> Like, I knew there was romance in it, so that's kind of why I wanted to watch it, but I really thought there, I, like, made the kids go out and, like, this is scary. It actually wasn't scary. There's only, like, one person in the movie that he actually helps die. Well, besides the, besides And that the, was an endearing scene. Besides the Bill guy. Yeah, and that was endearing. 
But, um, yeah, it was just a little weird because, well, she really liked the coffee shop guy. But then she fell in love with the guy, the, with the, the death, death guy. guy. But then That's not he was the same gone. Guy. And then the coffee shop guy came back as a consolation body. prize. And all he knew was their interaction in the coffee shop. He didn't know that they'd made love and they'd developed this relationship. And he never met the dad. He never spent time with the dad. Like, the other character had a relationship with the dad. But yeah. then he acted clueless about a lot of things. I'll never look at peanut butter the same way, I will say. And it was Laura Scudler's, which is the brand that we buy with no nuts. <laughs> so three and a so half out of five. Funny. Three both... and a half, yeah. It it's, was entertaining. It was too long. It, it was too long, and there was just too many inconsistencies. You could have gotten the idea by cutting it probably... This could have been an hour and a half to two hours, not three hours. But anyway... But it remember, the director got really angry when people cut his version down for TV. So yeah. Let the and man I have mean, his vision. He's a good looking guy. I don't mind staring at his face for three hours. It didn't hurt. Are you talking about Anthony Hopkins? Him? Can we just agree that they're both fine looking gentlemen? Oh, he's a good actor. And it actually made me feel better because all I saw him in before The Edge and this movie was Silence of the Lambs. So... Thank you, Anthony Hopkins, for not being creepy in every movie. Doesn't he seem like a wholesome guy? He does. Someone that you'd want to meet? He does. This seems like someone I'd want to meet. All right. Okay, I'm just I'm just being ridiculous. Okay, so for our next review on that it's note, cute, we'll though. dive right into another three-hour movie. But can we talk about the on. frosted tips or whatever's going on <laughs> oh with the gosh. dyed blonde hair it on top of the brown? It was a haircut of the time. Men so, don't really do that anymore, do they? Now that I've had you watch one three-hour movie with Brad Pitt, I think you're ready for another three-hour movie with Brad Pitt. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino. Oh, Tarantino's too, ninth, too violent. His ninth film. Too violent. It's not that bad. I think you're going to enjoy it. To you. Is there any romance? Maybe. That pause says no. Maybe. So, until next time, folks, maybe I can convince my wife to watch a Tarantino movie. Zero violence, zero creepiness, <laughs> just one steamy sex scene. Don't you want to get more eye candy of uh, Brad Pitt? Yeah, but without the violence. That's, there's one scene at the end. That's it. No more spoilers. We'll see you next time. We've ruined this movie in case you're watching <laughs> this review for maybe I should watch something new. Sorry, folks. It's been spoiled. What? Oh, I hope you watched this after you watched it. I'll just put spoilers in the heading and all will be solved. Yeah, let's do that. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye.